Hello, everybody. This is Barbara Tassa from Passport EDU, and today on our Passport EDU webinar series, we are featuring Tennessee Technological University or Tennessee Tech. Um, today, we have Mr. Charles Wilkins Wilkerson. I have to say that again. Mr. Charles Wilkerson, the Director of International Education, Ms. Ashley Watson, um, who is the International Student Recruiter at Tennessee Tech, and yours truly, Barb Tassa, founder of Passport EDU. What we'll cover on today's agenda, uh, our webinar, is Tennessee Tech, its academic programs, admissions, scholarships, so everything you really need to know about the university and talk about how to apply through Tennessee Tech as well as through Passport EDU and answer any questions that you may have. So hi Charles and Ashley, welcome. I'm really glad that you were able to join us for the webinar. I will pass it off to you to tell us about you if you can give a brief intro and I'll let you drive the conversation today. Sure, so my name is Ashley Watson. I am the International Student Recruiter, so I am responsible for uh, most of the outreach, getting Tennessee to different fairs and uh, agent meetings, um, just helping with the student recruitment piece. And then once we turn that student into an applicant, we'll uh, pass them on to uh, Misty Brown. But I'm always excited to see students matriculate. Uh, my name is Charles Wilkerson. I've been at Tech 11 years. Uh, I'm originally from San Francisco. Uh, Ashley, I believe, is uh, has lived in California as yep. well. Uh, I've, been, I've been at Tennessee Tech for 11 years, and uh, my, my main responsibility is agent contracts and mostly scholarships. So I'm usually the student's best friend. They always <laughs> want to come see me because I have the scholarships. So. Awesome. So um, Tennessee Tech is located in Cookville, and here's just a little information about our community. There's about 31,000 residents. About half of them are students, so it is very much a college-friendly town. Um, Cookville is considered one of the seven most affordable cities in the United States. So the cost of living is quite low. Things are, are very affordable, which again makes it a great place for college students. Um, we're considered a micropolitan. So nearby Cookville, there are a lot of smaller cities. So it attracts a lot of people from the nearby areas um, because we do have malls, we have tons of restaurants, so we have everything that big cities have just on a smaller scale. We're also conveniently located. We're about an hour from Nashville, hour and 15 from Knoxville, hour and a half uh, to Chattanooga, and you can get to Atlanta in about three and a half hours. So the, the Upper Cumberland region where we're located is about 100,000 people. So Ashley is correct. They, they, this area does attract a lot of people into there. Here's a photo of campus. Um, we have quite a number of uh, parking spots available for students, uh, lots that specifically for students if they do choose to have cars. You can get from one end of campus to the other end of campus walking in about 20 minutes. As you can see, there are a lot of trees. Um, students are outside quite a bit. There's always someone playing frisbee or soccer picnic. or some sport. And having picnics and things of mm -hmm. that nature. It's a very active campus. Uh, the TTU student population has 11,339 students. Uh, 10,314 of them are undergraduates. 1,025 are graduate students. 1,319 are international students. Um, you know, the university's retention, 92% of the students returned for the spring semester and 74% of students returned for the second year. The national average, by the way, is 58.2%. 85 percent of the basic engineering returned for the second year. Uh, basic engineering is the most popular major among international students. Basic engineering is where most students start before they make a concentration on mechanical or chemical or civil or electronic or electrical or computer engineering. Next mm -hmm. slide. Uh, so where are our students from? As you can see, we have a number of students from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And so this would be a good place to note that uh, currently we are close to both Saudi and Kuwaiti students that are here on scholarship. Um, if they can show proof uh, that they are self-paying students, we can um, go through the regular admission process with those students. 
Um, India is our third largest group this year. Our numbers change from year to year. So last year it was Brazil. Um, and again, we have China in and, and fourth place. And some newer uh, countries, Nigeria, we've increased the number, um, bringing them a little bit higher. And Ashley, let me just uh, kind of bring up something that we talked about previously. So at this point, your top two nationalities, so Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, um, there is a little bit of a challenge for new students, correct? Because the scholarship agencies, SACAM, and then the Kuwaiti Culture Institute right now are not um, approving scholarships for TTU That's at correct. this time because you're over limit. Is that right? Yeah, we are, we're on their list of over, they call it, they use the word oversaturation. So uh, we're, we're on the, uh, now graduate students for Saudi Arabia can apply, but the graduate school is very, very competitive. They do require the GRE. Kuwait, and Kuwait is the same. So they, but we are, if the student is expecting to apply for the scholarship from their embassy, it's going to be a challenge. Okay, so right now, most likely only self-pay students, not scholarship students uh, from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait will be able to go. Here's a bit more information about our rankings and accreditation. We have a number of accreditations. So um, this is a school that's fully vetted by a number of different boards. In terms of our ranking, we are number 34 in the South. We are a regionally ranked institution. Um, we are consistently ranked one of the best value colleges and universities in the United States and in the South. And we have uh, the top 21 best MBA programs. Also, uh, for our MBA program, there is an online option if students are not able to travel to the United States if they're looking for an online MBA program, they can consider Tennessee Tech. Both, op both options are available on campus or online. Okay. Would international students be mostly choosing um, the on-campus option or online as well? We see a lot of the international students opting for the on-campus. One of my favorite slides. Uh, so <laughs> to familiarize yourself, there are a lot of Tennessee faces that we know. Taylor Swift is probably the most popular one right now. There's also Morgan Freeman, an actor that has been in many different movies, Oprah Winfrey, Miley Cyrus, Tina Turner, a lot of musicians um, are here in Tennessee. If you love music and if you love food, Tennessee is a good place for you. So how would a student run into one of these famous Tennessee residents if they're on campus? Uh, well, <laughs> well, Megan Fox actually lives in this region, so students have actually seen her at the store, you know, about grocery shopping and such. Oh, that's you pretty know. cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Are there a lot of um, concerts, free concerts uh, that, you know, students could attend on campus or nearby in, um, in Nashville? If, I don't know if they're free, but there's lots of concerts. This weekend was Kelly Clarkson was this weekend. Uh, you know, I, I, several students went to see Kelly Clarkson in Nashville. Uh, Bonnaroo is in the summertime. Yeah, that's huge. huge. A huge musical festival that's for three days. That's the Coachella of Tennessee, I guess. Coachella, uh, you know, and, and some of the previous headliners have been Eminem, Rolling Stones, Lady Gaga, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> yeah, definitely lots to do and lots to see, I guess, if you're really into music or, or film as well. Undergraduate admissions. The Office of International Education is responsible for all undergraduate, international undergraduate applicants. The Office of Graduate Studies is responsible for all graduate applications. Uh, the requirements to apply as an international undergraduate student is we, we must have copies of a student's transcript. For most majors, the minimum GPA is a 2.5, but for engineering and health science majors, it is a 3.0. Uh, we do require a TOEFL, a TOEFL score of the IBT of a 61 or above. For the institutional paper-based TOEFL, we will accept a 500. Uh, the ELT score, we do require a 5.5 or more. And we will also accept the Peterson exam, the, the, the Peterson's test of English, TOEIC. We will accept the Cambridge exams. And we will accept several different ESL providers uh, level certificates like EOS level 109. FLS level seven, uh, Kaplan, we will accept Zoni, Bridge, we accept several different ESL providers certificates. So uh, you, you should just contact us and see if we accept that certificate. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we also do accept the ACT and SAT score, but these are optional. These are not required exams. And question about the TOEFL. For students that are not planning on writing the, um, the TOEFL IBT or any other English exam, what are their options for pathways from an IEP? Um, are there partner IEPs on or near campus that they could attend um, and then get conditionally accepted to the university? Yes, yes, we do. We do something with EOS, and on our campus we have a program called FLS International, and the students can attend FLS International, and they can matriculate to Tech, and they will be on our campus. Mm -hmm. But we do uh, issue conditional letters of admission for other providers. As, as mentioned in the previous slide, uh, the GPA requirement is 2.5 to join as a new freshman for most majors, and it is a 3.0 for the pre-professional engineering and nursing programs. Uh, the minimum GPA for transfer students is a 2.0, but for engineering, it is a 2. Point, and, and the pre-professional programs, it is a 3.0. Actually, I'll let you do So um, here's a slide that shows our most popular majors at TTU uh, for both domestic and international students. Um, can you move to the next slide? Yep. And this just highlights for the international students what kind of programs they're interested in. As Charlie mentioned earlier, we have basic business and basic engineering. Uh, when students start off in business or engineering, they are admitted under basic. So once they take their preliminary courses and kind of find their footing, they can specialize into accounting or into mechanical engineering. Um, so in terms of specializations, computer science is very popular amongst our engineering majors the different uh, engineering for electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. I do want to highlight general curriculum. Uh, so if a student is unsure of what they want to major in, they know they want to attend a four-year institution, but they're not sure what they want to study, they can come under general curriculum. So for um, about the first year and a half, they can take different coursework to figure out what their strengths are, what they're interested in, and still be able to graduate in four years. So they're uh, taking classes, they're gaining credit, and they're not falling behind as they figure out what they're doing. About every uh, three or four years, uh, there are new majors and programs that are developed. A lot of times these programs are developed because students will major and minor and kind of create their own program. And uh, some professors like to take notice of this, and when departments have the budget, they'll create new programs. And so in 2013, uh, we added the environmental science program, and as I want to know, uh, environmental technology. So sustainable energy is something that's been in the media, and a lot of students are interested in studying it from different angles. So this would be a good alternative for students. Then also society, culture, and communication. This is great for your students who are interested in psychology and sociology, but also the way cultures work. If they like to take different languages, they'll be able to um, find a, a good avenue to do that in this program. This major is interdisciplinary in, in study. It, it, it's under the interdisciplinary studies major, and so it is made up of several different departments. We encourage students to also uh, choose a minor or a concentration so they're able to supplement whatever their main education is. If they know they want to do business, but they really like arts, they can major in business. That will be what their diploma says, but they can also have some art classes. Okay, awesome. Here are some of our special centers and stations, which uh, make PTU very unique. Again, we are a community. Uh, focused institution. So a lot of these things are open to different members of the community. Um, we have the fishery for our fishery and science. We do have a weather station on campus. Um, we have a tech farm. They do different events throughout the year from selling tomatoes to having fairs and uh, teaching students about um, honey, and uh, they do some uh, great events with first graders. We have the Child Development Lab uh, for students who are interested in early childhood education. This will be a great place to get your feet wet. We also have the Appalachian Center for Crafts um, if students are interested in art. So how do these centers and the university work together? Are these buildings on campus? Are there are these organizations that work on campus? Or are they just partnerships with certain academic departments? 
they're, they're on they're on campus. They're on campus. They're on they're campus. Other, like for example, the fisheries is part of the biology department. Uh, the tech farm is part of agriculture. Ag uh, Appalachian Craft Center is under the College of Education and the major of art. So they're all part of the campus. Okay, very cool. This is my uh, favorite topic. I uh, was going to say have... this is probably, this is the part that makes you very popular, right, Charles? Yes, <laughs> uh, you would not believe how popular I am. Uh, I have students who will not speak to me until they find out I have a scholarship. Um, for example, most of the scholarships we do have are for undergraduate students only. Graduate students have the option of doing a graduate assistantship, which is actually better than a scholarship. So. Remember, these scholarships are intently for undergraduate students. Uh, we have a three international undergraduate scholarships. The first one is the Merit Scholarship, which covers part of the out-of-state tuition and is approximately about $4,300 a semester. The student has to have a 3.3 GPA to qualify for this, for this scholarship. And we only look at the grade point average for this. So if a student has a very, very good SAT score, but they have a 3.2, we still have to look at the 3.2. So uh, the next one is the multinational scholarship, which is based on students from countries where we don't have a lot of students from. And we're, the reason for this scholarship is to promote diversity. It is $1,000 a semester and is a 3.0 GPA requirement. And then we have a legacy scholarship for alumni and alumni's family members. And which is a fi which is five hundred dollars a semester. If a student was able to get all scholarships we have available, they could get literally would cover about fifty percent of the student's tuition. And tuition is about eleven thousand dollars, so a student technically could get a fifty five hundred dollars scholarship. For the merit scholarships, are you looking at the GPA when they apply with their high school marks, um, or is it something like? that starts like the you know the first year that they're actually in school and then we're, look at the we're looking at their high school marks mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is if a st i have had students who entered and their high school marks were so 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 they were unable to get it based on their high school marks after they were at tech for a semester they were able to show me that they had grades of a 3.3 they were actually if scholarships are still available they can apply for the scholarship after the second semester if they have a 3.3. So okay, great. So that's do, very flexible, do, yeah. Do continue to award scholarships ongoing, like I said, based on availability. So sometimes that, uh, we, we, this year was the first semester I ran out of scholarship. So how many students would get scholarships each year or each semester? Uh, we give out 120 per year. Okay, so that's quite a bit. There's a lot of opportunity yeah. then. Yeah, a lot of opportunities. We definitely get questions about if students want to supplement, their scholarships or just paid tuition, um, what are the working on campus opportunities or work opportunities in general? Working on campus only pays $7 per hour. Oh, okay. So, if a student, so a student is only legally allowed to work 20 hours on campus. That's $140 a week. That's not going to cover their tuition $11,000. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of students who assume they can do that and it's not enough. So they, they have to show proof that they have their own funds. But it is a great option to have some pocket money to spend while you're here. And um, students are allowed to work, as Charlie said, for 20 hours per week. Um, the campus positions are quite limited in that they're difficult to get. They will be competing with domestic students for these positions. But we do have a fair number of international students who are working on campus. Our office is probably the most popular office for international students. Um, but the fitness center is also quite popular with students. They really enjoy working out. It's a great place to meet people. The library is quite popular because students can study while they're there. The cafeteria is probably um, the best bet in terms of there, having... There's lots of openings in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. usually. Mm -hmm. And again, the Children's Development Lab would really only be available uh, for students who are focusing on education. Um, are students allowed to work off campus? Technically, based on the immigration laws, unless it's part of their major and part of their program, we do have a CPT program, which is like co-op internship. Mm -hmm. Students can, if they can, if it is part of their major, let's, let's say a student's major is biology, and there's a company nearby looking for some interns to do some research on the biological system here in, Cook, in Cookville or in Tennessee, a student could technically do that 
as part of the CPT program, but the student would have to register for one credit hour. Uh, students cannot just arbitrarily work off campus. That's not legal to do. Okay, perfect. So SAT and ACT, they are not required for admission. However, there's also the honor scholarship that's available to both international and domestic students. To be considered for the honor scholarship, students will need to submit either SAT or ACT scores. Um, for the SAT, they will need an 1170 combined score of math and critical reading or 26 on the ACT. Also, the GPA requirement is higher. It is a 3.5 GPA. Um, there is no limit to the number of honor scholarships that the university can give out, and it is quite significant. It's about 7,500 per semester, so uh, this is a very attractive thing for students if they have the grades. It's, it's 15,000 a year, so it is a considerable amount of money. <laughs> oh, I think I may have actually just covered that up in my, with my uh, join me, so let me, the last little part here. Oh, hold on a second. It's kind of hard to place this thing <laughs> for not to be in the way. Okay, let's try this. There we go. Scholarship amount is 7,500 per semester, or like you said, $15,000 per year. And considering our tuition is about $22,000, that's considerable. Yeah. Right. And and if a student has a 3.5 GPA for the honor scholarship, a 3.3 for the merit, students can compound scholarships. So mm -hmm. we do want students to be here, and we want to award the students that have the grades. Okay, great. Um, how many international students right now um, are getting honor scholarships? I think we have about 15 at the moment, 15 students. But the majority of international students don't take the ACT or SAT scores. That's the main reason why there's only... 15 students. Mm -hmm. Okay. If more, more students took the ACT or SAT, I have a feeling more students would be eligible. But since so many of them do not take the ACT or SAT, that's the main reason. Got it. Okay. That's good to know. And Amanda, it is, it is not a negotiable thing for the honors program. They have to have it. <laughs> okay. And is this a scholarship only at the time of admission, or can they apply, um, you know, later if they're, let's say, if they're SAT? As long as they apply by the second year, they can apply for it. Okay. If they, if they try to apply for it from their third year, they probably will not award it because students who are in the honors program have to take honors classes in addition to that. So if a student waited until their third year, they would have four classes that they would have to take on top of the four classes to graduate. So they'd have eight honors courses to take on top of their regular admission. So there's courses related to it. Makes sense. Okay. Great scholarship, though. Yeah, it's very popular. I just mm -hmm. wish more students had the ACT scores. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try to spread the word. Yeah. Housing. Now, Tennessee Tech has many, many housing options. Uh, we, we, most of the, the dormitories on our campuses have a theme. And uh, uh, residence life at TTU, we, one, of, one of the things we try to make sure the students understand is um, you will have a roommate, and sometimes that does cause an issue with students. Sometimes students want to have their own personal private room, and those rooms, uh, private housing is actually very limited on our campus. Uh, as mentioned, we do, each dormitory has its own kind of theme. Uh, we have a global village, we have a business, an entrepreneurship a village, we have a leadership village, a recycling village. Uh, Trying to think of all of them, uh, engineering village. We every one of them has a theme, and uh, the cost uh, is primarily in the two thousand range, from twenty two hundred up to three thousand four hundred. The dormitories, which are three thousand four hundred, have private bathrooms, so that's the reason they're more expensive. You want to talk about the meal plan? Sure. If students choose to live on campus. They are required to have meal plans, and we have four different options for meal plans depending on um, the student. So if a student does enjoy going out to eat at different restaurants and they don't want to uh, eat on campus, then the seven meals per week option would be the best, and that's $1,850 per semester. Mm -hmm. um, and so and that's seven meals per week. Per week, and so they could have uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 
all in, in two days, or they could have one meal per day in the cafeteria. Students also get a dining dollar so that they could use at a Starbucks. Um, uh, students can also live off campus. That is an option we uh, have for students. Um, typically, a two-bedroom apartment will run around $500 to $600 uh, in Cookville. That is a much more students, affordable than San Francisco, I will say. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. A lot of the students who have a special diet like halal or vegan, uh, most of the students who have a special diet actually opt to live off campus so they can prepare their own. Student life. So TTU, again, is quite active. We have over 500 student organizations. Uh, if there's not a club already in existence, students can. Um, write a proposal to have approved to start a new club. We have everything from the Saudi Club, Chinese, uh, Chinese Student Association, to Ultimate Frisbee. So one of the organizations we have is International Friends. Um, just a short story, so I went to school out in California, but I'm originally from New York. So during the holidays like Thanksgiving or Spring Break, which were long but not quite long enough to go home, um, I was on campus by myself, all the other students went home, and so it could be quite lonely. And that's really the reason why International Friends is um, in existence for students that aren't going to be going home during the holidays. They could share a meal with a family that's here in the community, and it's all volunteer-based. Um, they don't live with the families, but they do enjoy time with a family here. They'll go to dinner, go bowling, go see a movie things of that nature. Oh, that's awesome. Sports, very popular here in the South. It's very important. If students don't like sports, they probably will by the time they leave TTU. <laughs> um, basketball, soccer, volleyball, and students, uh, they don't have to pay to go to these games. It's included in their um, tuition fees. And um, we also have a gym that students can access on their own. So if they like lifting weights or if they just want to run the track, that's an option that's available to them. It has a swimming pool. A full-size Olympic swimming pool. Uh, again, many, many places for students to just play sports on the campus in general. We have a lot of green space. So let me ask, what is the picture on the top right? Is that a sport where you drive a car through water? Is this like car water polo? <laughs> we have an organization called the Mini Baja, and actually students, actually made that car. Oh, cool. actually, and, and they compete. They have competitions on what the car can do. They actually had one of the cars where, uh, this one has the person driving it. They actually one year made them where they could actually manually hand, uh, use, a, use joysticks to manually use, uh, make it move and maneuver. <laughs> so uh, they, they, it, it is a club and students actually compete. <laughs> OK, very cool. And, 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 and we also compete with other schools, and Tennessee Tech has actually won that competition nationally um, at, least, at least five times that I know of. Amazing. That's really cool. Uh, TTU has another organization called One World, and it, this is a m multinational uh, club. They, do, uh, they usually do once a month some kind of activity uh, where they'll have a speaker come in, talk about a specific country, and what they do is they invite all the freshman students in the freshman university class to come and attend. And then they will also highlight a, a region of the world and they will prepare a dinner that will be served to these students. And so we'll have, and then, then we'll have somebody come and do some kind of a cultural presentation, a dance, uh, teach them a game. So they'll get three different cultures in one, after, one evening. And like I said, it's expo we're exposing this mostly to the freshman students because we're trying to gain their interest and in, in trying to encourage them to maybe study abroad or befriend the international students. So it's a way for the international students to give back to the local students. And the, and the students love participating. Okay. And we have enough, so we have a buddy program. Every, uh, for the new students who arrive, like for example, we had 200 new international students arrive about two weeks ago. Every new student is paired with a buddy, and that buddy is kind of like a big sister or a big brother. Uh, we, we do take students um, 
hobbies or interest into that. You know, sometimes we have students who say, oh, I, female students who say, I only want a female student, or a male student says, I want to have a male student, or whatever, or I want to have a student who plays sports, or I want to have a student who likes movies. We try to pair them with somebody who has similar hobbies or similar interests. And it's interesting, a lot of the buddies, they will keep in touch for years. And uh, a lot of the students who end up studying abroad will actually visit their buddies. We have a student right now who's in Europe, and she actually visited, uh, she visited her buddy in Sweden, and she met some of the other students during the buddy program from Germany, and she visited them in Germany and Spain, too. So uh, it's, it's a very good way to cross-culturally communicate and interact, and the students love it. Great. So they, um, do they know who their buddy is before they arrive on campus, or is that something that they learn when they actually show up? When they show up. We, ha we have to do it after they show up because sometimes the, uh, the matching, it's, it's hard to do before they get here. <laughs> okay. Great. Graduate program. Uh, so TTU offers both uh, master's level and PhD programs. Um, here highlights the master programs that we have. Uh, for all of the master's programs, they will have to uh, take the GRE or the GMAT depending on the coursework. Um, and again, as Charlie mentioned earlier, graduate admissions is a separate office from our office. Uh, so we do work together, but in terms of uh, anything admissions related, that is something that's done outside of our office. Um, as I mentioned, we do have some programs that are available online for uh, people who are not able to come here to the states, it might be something that uh, you want to consider. Um, the, online the online courses are in the bottom corner, uh, the bottom right corner of the options for online or things. Uh, please, please remember the, some of the majors are very, very competitive. And uh, when I say competitive, I mean they, they do not admit a lot of students. Uh, for example, the chemistry and biology department, they routinely will not admit more than 10 students. So if we get 300 applicants, there's going to be 290 denials. So okay. please remember that, agents, when you're recruiting for some of these more competitive majors, that there may be limited spots in those majors. Okay. And also, the graduate admissions deadlines, they are hard deadlines. Uh, we can't budge with them. We <laughs> We have no say in that. If there's an undergraduate student, we might be able to work. Um, but if, if they're on campus, we might be able campus. to do it. But yeah. if they're coming from abroad, it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So if, um, if a student is interested in the graduate programs, um, what, what would you recommend? Do they, should they get in their materials well in advance? And how long would, them to, how long would it take for them to get to know their admission decision? It, it might take up to a month because some of the departments only decide via committee, so therefore they have to get the committee together. Okay. That decision, and specifically that's the engineering department that's things done by committee. Okay. Also, it depends on funding. Some of the departments admit the students based on if they're going to have funding for the research that's going to be, do, be done, and so therefore until they know if their funding is approved by the provider, uh, sometimes they will not they will limit the number of uh, students they admit based on the funding available that's available. Got it. MB MBA, for example, is the easiest because it's not based on funding and it's not based on numbers. So, okay. if, so if you have students interested in, in the MBA program or education, those are good options. Okay. And with the MBA program as well, sometimes we get the question, is the GMAT required? Uh, yes. It is required. It is required, it, it, and they will not they will not budge on that either. <laughs> okay, got it. We have students who graduate from our our business program here with 4.0. They still have to have a GMAT. Got it. So. Okay. Um, for any agents that have worked with us in the past, uh, they might still think we have the pre MBA program, uh, but we no longer have the pre MBA program. So if students want to get an MBA but they did not study. Um, business or business related field in undergraduate schools, they still can be admitted to the MBA program and we built in foundational courses. The only course this is not true for is accounting. If students do not have a background in accounting, there are some preliminary classes they will be required to take. 
Mm-hmm. And where would they do the preliminary re- uh, requirements before they apply or um, before they, they just start they the can, courses? They, they can take them here at Tech. Uh, they, will ha- they will be required to take them before they will be fully admitted into the MBA program. Okay, got it. Uh, we actually do have quite a few students who come to us and say, I want to do an MBA, but I studied something not related to business. I'm, a, I'm afraid I will fail. Can I take some of these pre-MBA courses? And so we, we, it, interesting enough, we still get a lot of requests for this. Mm-hmm. Got it. And, and we, do, we do let students take these pre-MBA courses if they want. Graduate assistantship. Uh, as mentioned, uh, with undergraduate students, we have the undergraduate scholarship. For the graduate students, they have the graduate assistantship. Uh, the difference is the graduate assistantship pays for the student's tuition. And therefore, a student, if a student gets a full assistantship, the student would therefore not pay any tuition whatsoever. Now remember, these are very, very, very competitive, and they're very, very limited in number. So early applicants usually get these first. I had somebody come to me a month ago and say, oh, I want a GA. And I was like, uh, OK. So I called to find out when was the last GA provided. And the last GA was for fall was, was distributed in May. And okay. the application deadline was April. So you can see the graduate, the graduate GAs actually, the graduate assistants evaporate pretty quick. And, and like I said, they're a very limited in number. As you can see, with the GA also, they get a stipend. And that actually helps pay for their housing, their books, their meal plan, uh, meal plan if they want to get a meal plan, uh, groceries, whatever, insurance. So uh, that's one of the pluses of having a G. Mm-hmm. Tuition is paid for, and you get a stipend. So there are, of course, concerns about life after TTU. Everyone wants to make sure that they are getting a return on interest on their education. And so I do want to highlight that. Uh, TTU encourages students, both domestic and international, uh, to use our career services. So here are a few options. We have career counselors um, that will help with career exploration, academic skills and enhancement. Um, Sometimes students have testing anxiety when it comes to standardized testing, and so they'll work with students in that way. Uh, This is great for a student, as I mentioned, who um, is not sure exactly what they want to major in or exactly how they want to use their degree. The career counselors can help them with this. And it's also available to alumni. So once students have graduated, if they are considering a career change, um, they can still access uh, the career counselors. Um, Again, we have opportunities for students to work on campus. Uh, Charlie had mentioned the um, CPT, um, and then we also have the OPT, which is sorry for the the misspell. Um, But as students graduate, they can work with our immigration specialist to um, finalize um, life after graduating if they do want to stay here in the States. And what are some common uh, jobs or careers or companies that recruit on campus that want to work with international students? Uh, the, the, well, Federal Express is located, is uh, headquartered in Tennessee, so we have quite a few students who actually have worked, who studied in our business program, production and operations management. Uh, that major specifically is very, very highly sought after by FedEx, so students who studied production and operations management. So we've actually had quite a few students go work for FedEx. Uh, we've had a lot of students who studied engineering who worked for Y12. Y12 is the largest nuclear power plant in the United States, and it's located about 45 minutes from Cookville. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've had quite a few students go work there who study chemical engineering or electrical engineering and power systems. Uh, we've had students work for Verizon. We've had students work for uh, Nissan. Nissan's uh, in Nashville. The headquarters for Nissan for the United States is in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 so they have two headquarters, one in Tokyo and one in Nashville. And the, the Nissan, so we've had quite a few students go work for Nissan in, in Nashville. Uh, Enzo has also been a very common uh, employer for our students, and which is a, a, a tier two Japanese uh, supplier company. Uh, Toshiba, which is also located in Tennessee. We've had a lot, I mean, it, honestly, I'm, we've had a lot of students able to find jobs uh, in, the, in the region, just in the region. But of course, we've had a lot of students go out of state and find jobs, especially the students who studied engineering. 
uh, students who studied computer science, computer engineering, electrical engineering, those students were able to find a job very quickly. Students who studied nursing, our nursing program is very, very competitive and very um, is one of the, the hardest majors here at Tech. We've had quite a few students who studied nursing also able to find jobs in the field. Okay, great. Oh, and let me ask uh, one question here as well. Uh, how do you support international students looking for jobs when they're graduating? Yeah, uh, we, every semester we have three or four uh, career fairs. Sometimes we'll even have specific ones for just like engineering. Sometimes we'll have specific ones for education, business majors, and then we'll have some that are comprehensive for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Several every And then when they do get job offers, um, you would help them through the OPT process. Yes, we have we have two immigration specialists in our office who work full time to help students with that process. Great. Okay, internships. Charlie mentioned quite a few of uh, the internships and jobs students have had. We have a student worker here who's from Brazil, and uh, over the summer, over one of his summers, he had uh, worked with Nissan. So again, these are great opportunities for international students, and especially if you're into engineering or um, education, there are different opportunities. So here are our top five reasons to choose you. You know you're going to get a quality education at an affordable cost. Um, no student should have to worry about grades and also how they're going to eat food. So um, that's one of the great things about Cookville. We want our international students to be here um, and feel less of the financial strain, which is why we have scholarships for international students only. And Charlie mentioned that uh, students can receive the scholarship if they don't have the GPA when they first get here, if they bring up their GPA once they're here, they can get a scholarship. But also, we don't want students to just lose their scholarship in one semester. So if they perform poorly, if they have a very difficult chemistry class in one semester, their grades are low, we're not going to pull that scholarship right away. We give them another chance to bring up their grades. We give them one year. We give them a one-year grace period. Uh, the atmosphere, it's small, yet it's very diverse. Our international students bring a lot to this community, um, and our, the community recognizes the international students. They recognize um, the importance of having them here, and you will run into the same people in Walmart and things like that, so it's great if you want to feel like you have a family to come back to. With ESL preparation, we partner with a different, uh, quite a number of um, intensive English programs, and we do have one here on campus if students choose that way. We're strategically located. Again, if students are graduating and they want to stay in the United States, they're going to have to interview at a lot of different places. And so the fact that we have Charlotte within a five-hour drive and um, Atlanta within a three-hour drive, Nashville within an hour, Knoxville in an hour and 15, it gives students a lot of opportunities to really send out their application. And also, it's nice to vacation in different places in the state. <laughs> um, cool. And we have dedicated staff that's here for our students. We have two immigration specialists. We have a community liaison. And her only job is to be a mom to the students if they need anyone to talk to when they're homesick or if they run into problems or they have to Go to court. <laughs> Go to court. She is there for our students. So She, she goes to court with them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Does that happen? <laughs> huh? Does that happen? Yeah, is that like for speeding tickets or something like speeding that? Tickets, speeding tickets, yeah. Know, speeding they, lo they, love to, they, they love to speed here. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, keep it down on the speeding. <laughs> In their muscle cars. Yeah. Well, these are definitely five great reasons to attend TTU. Um, the next steps for, uh, for most of you will be to visit the school website, um, really understand the international admissions requirements and um, additional programs. You can start applying through Passport EDU or on the Tennessee Tech website. And I think I may have actually missed this. So the academic deadline is not December 1st, it's November 1st. Is that correct? Correct, November 1st. Okay, so I'll maybe... I'll make that correction now. And for undergraduate, for undergraduate admissions, if a student is in the United States, that's flexible. So if you have a student who is in, let's say they're studying in Boston, and they have all their stuff together after November the 1st, I will consider the application. If they're coming from abroad, after November the 1st will be tough. Yep. It will be tough. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so that's uh, so remember, but for graduate students, that deadline of October uh, for spring of October the first is very very firm. Got it. <laughs> got it. Got it. This is a quick how-to for our agencies. Um, you go into passportedu.com. You click on the agents tab. From there, you can either log into your account, or if you don't have an account, you can create a new one. Um, you would add your students, the one that wants to go to Tennessee Tech. Um, you'd search for the school name and then apply to the school itself. All the applications are collected online. You can pay application fees online and then we submit them to the university. So that's how the Passport EDU application works. Um, one of the questions I did actually get Charles and Ashley just before I wrap it up is with regards to athletic scholarships, we talked a lot about merit scholarships for GPA and SAT base. Are there any scholarships for uh, sports or um, students pursuing athletics at Tennessee Tech? The way the NCAA makes the policy is if a student is interested in a specific sport, the student must first initiate an inquiry with the coach in question. All the sports at Tennessee Tech information is under www.ttusports.com. And then there's a then it shows like the sports, male and female. Then you go to that specific sports. Let's say the student wants to do volleyball. Mm -hmm. so the student would go, if, would go to the female uh, for, ball, for for volleyball, and then they would send an inquiry to the, the coach of record. And we usually encourage a student. And I usually I get a lot of inquiries from students who want to play sports, and so I usually direct them to the coach first. Um, I would say 50% of the time, the coaches are interested. So I've actually seen quite a few of these students come to Tech that okay. have sent me inquiries. So, um, so the inquiry process does work. Are there any other things you would like to mention, Ashley or Charles, just from your perspective, you know, you working with international students, what is it that they really love about the school? Um, is there anything else you'd like to share to really kind of give us the feel of um, Tennessee Tech? for prospective students and the agencies or high school college counselors that may be listening? Well, I do know the students who transfer here. We get a lot of students who transfer from all over the United States. And the first thing the students do say is people here are very, very warm, very, very friendly. Uh, students are always shocked at the cost of living, how affordable it is. Uh, we had a girl transfer recently from Boston. She was studying in, the, in, in one of the ESL programs in Boston, and she said she was paying $1,700 a month for her rent, and she's now paying $550 for a two-bedroom. <laughs> and so she was just blown away that she went from paying $1,700 to the $550. So the cost of living is always a pleasant surprise for them because they said now she actually said to me, I have $1,200 extra. To do things with. <laughs> Amazing. That doesn't happen uh, on the coasts for sure, but it can definitely yeah, happen exactly. in Tennessee. Thank you again, Ashley and Charles, for sharing all your great knowledge about Tennessee Tech University. Um, everything will be recorded and I will be providing the links afterwards. If there's any questions, feel free to email me at barbara at passportedu.com. Visit Passport EDU or Tennessee Tech.